Hello everyone. Welcome to the Berwick Public Library. Tonight's presentation is going to be a very interesting one and a very fun one. I would like to introduce Mark Hobson, Dr. Mark Hobson, who is an ordained Christian minister with advanced degrees in theology, business administration, higher education administration, and neuroscience. And I am looking forward to learning more about all of that. I like going to school. <laughs> Mark brings his academic, his business, and his science knowledge to bear in his writing. And he is going to introduce his new book. It's a fiction book, and it's called The Mantle. And I am going to let you talk about your book. Thank you, so Sharon. So thank you, and welcome, Mark. Thank you, everyone. I'm so pleased to be with you all tonight. I'm very grateful. Um, my wife Rose is with me and we are from Salmon Falls Road in Rochester, not very far from where we are tonight. I'd like to begin this presentation with a, a professionally produced uh, movie trailer uh, that was actually pulled together by people at Amazon for me. And hopefully you'll find it interesting. It's one minute long. Thank you for watching that. I enjoy um, listening to that uh, video and could uh, play it as a, a background all day long to my work. So, my name, as Sharon said, is uh, Dr. Mark Hobson. And about um, two years ago, I had this idea based on a sermon that I had written that focused on the Gospel of John. And it was for Easter time. And the sermon talked about the scripture that has Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John um, going to uh, the tomb. And in the tomb, they find this cloth. So they have all the burial trappings of Jesus, but John focuses on this single cloth that's set aside from everything else. Um, that really captured my imagination, and I decided I want to do more research about it, and that became the book. So the picture of the book is here on the screen, and um, like to drive you to come to my website at drmarkhobson.com where if you register you'll receive a newsletter you'll receive uh, weekly YouTube videos that are about 10 minutes long all of it is free um, a portion of the proceeds of the sale of the book go to the youth to youth foundation in um, Dover New Hampshire that is established to help uh, adolescents to stay away from uh, drugs and alcohol. Also, the book is sold and produced through Amazon, but it's also available at Barnes & Noble, Google, and Apple iBooks. The Mantle is about 200 pages, 23 chapters. It's a pretty quick read. It has two graphic images and a very robust bibliography for those of you who are librarians. And it's got some really nice research in it. The book is divided between six wearers of 
the mantle before the Crusades and six wearers after the Crusades. The book begins at the resurrection of Jesus. The book contains 10 chapters of the past and 13 chapters of the present. And the main character is John, St. John the Evangelist in the past care and the past chapters and the main character in the present is Dr. John Mark Hopkins who's a university dean and professor. Um, I am a graduate of uh, Johns Hopkins University so his name is an homage to my alma mater. Uh, in between the storylines there is scripture and history and legend and characters who wore the mantle. So in the chapters before the present time, we learn that St. John went to the tomb and somehow secretly took the mantle out of the tomb. I had to get the mantle out of the tomb in order to make the story happen. So John secretly took it, and I'll explain to you in a little bit why he did so. Along the way, we're also going to meet some famous characters and some not so famous characters, but including Constantine the Great and Marco Polo, who make appearances in the book. Also appearing in the book, in the, in the past tense, is St. Peter, St. Andrew, and Mary. And there's an interesting chapter that talks about how there is a legend in Christian tradition that the four of them traveled to the four British Isles and developed churches there. Yes. I have a question. Sorry to interrupt. I hope it's okay to ask a question. Surely. Um, when you talk about the cloth that John focuses on, isn't that the shroud that Jesus was wearing that has healing powers for people? So there's two different um, sections. Great question. And the question was, it, when I'm speaking about the mantle, am I talking about the burial cloth of Jesus? And John's gospel specifically says, there are the burial cloths of Jesus, which is apparently the Shroud of Turin. And then there is this mantle. And if you do a history and a tradition about just the mantle, the mantle was the cloth that covered his head only. So a mantle, when I'm thinking mantle, I'm thinking like the mantle on a fireplace. So it's actually the cloth. It's it, not like a it's wooden a, structure. Okay. Correct. So the man, the man, that's a great question. The mantle is, is a cloth that in the time of Jesus, they would, um, they would first wrap the entire body in linen, then they would put another cloth on the outside, almost like a coat, and then they would just wrap up the head itself. So, uh, great question, thank you for asking. Let me continue. I'm having fun, I hope you're interested so far. <laughs> so now I wanna share some information about John's gospel as it's related to our story. So this cloth that covered the head of Jesus in death and at the resurrection, is only found in his gospel. In no other place in the entire New Testament is there any reference at all to a mantle that covered the head of Jesus in death. And that's the quote. The cloth that had been wrapped around his head, specifically. The cloth was still lying in a place. Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know why this keeps doing it. Forgive me. It's this small detail which captured my imagination and said to me, there's something about this cloth that you need to research, and I did. So, not revealed in Scripture is this tradition that someone took it from the tomb, and yeah. writing fiction, I decided that someone would be St. John. And there's a reason why I picked John. John also hid this fact from the other 12, 12 apostles. And according to the legend, there will be 12 people that will wear the mantle before the Crusades and 12 and six people, excuse me, before the Crusades and six people 
after their crusades. And once someone puts the mantle on their head, they hear the voice of Jesus giving them directions. And they're also able to perform miracles like Jesus did. Let me get to that in one minute. So what about this mantle? Well, if you do research on it, you can go back as far as the 12th and the 13th century and you can find both the written word and artwork about the legend. And on this painting on wood that's in four different structures, you can see that there is a point in time where the Roman soldiers took the cloth that was surrounding his body and they took it off and they stripped him naked because the Roman soldiers knew that there was a religious and a cultural tradition of Jewish people that men were circumcised. So this was one more way for the Romans to torture Jesus in death. Now his mother saw this and she was completely saddened and shamed beyond measure when she sees him nude and knowing that he didn't have his loincloth anymore. So she did something incredibly courageous. Now standing near the cross is Mary and John. Also is Mary's stepsister, her name is Salome, as well as Mary Magdalene. Mary takes the veil from her head and she and St. John walk up to the cross. It was probably about four feet from the ground. And they covered the torso of Jesus so he would no longer be naked to hide his shame. And they went back. Now, unbelievably, miraculously, the Roman soldiers did not kill them for doing this. Because, you see, Jesus was killed because he was an enemy of the state. And if you were the mother of Jesus and the friend of Jesus, then you're an enemy of the state as well. But God somehow preserved them and protected them and allowed them to get that veil from her head onto the body of Jesus. Now there's a story about the veil. In history, when women in the time of Jesus and his mother Mary when they were going to have a baby, the family, um, we, would call, <laughs> we might call it some kind of a shower or a party, but in that time, a very practical gift was to give a woman a very expensive linen cloth that she could wear around her head as a veil, but also wrap it around her baby and breastfeed him in private, or her in private, but also tuck them in close and then carry them as they go around their home, cleaning, going to the marketplace, doing their chores. And the child is safe and protected, wrapped in that veil. The linen cloth was so expensive that the legend says that Mary kept that same cloth that she wrapped Jesus as a baby, and that's the cloth that she took off of her head to wrap and hide his shame. It's an amazing legend. It gives me the chills every time I think about it. So you see, now, John has the mantle. It's outside of the tomb. It's performing miracles. Why? Because there's this ancient tradition that once that cloth went on to Jesus, his DNA became part of the cloth. His blood, his sweat, his tears. He was tortured horribly. Then they used that same cloth to wrap his head. Why? Because his mother conducted the funeral process with Joseph of Arimathea to make sure that Jesus was buried properly. Incredibly, Jesus was buried in a brand new tomb with these exorbitant amount of spices, says John's Gospel. Only kings and the ultra-rich were buried in new tombs with that amount of spice to preserve their body. 
when Jesus rose from the dead in that tomb, the power of the resurrection that could bring a, a human life back into form went into that mantle. And John knew that. So once you wear the mantle, and there are 12 people who do in my stories, you can do what Jesus did. You see, after Jesus rose from the dead, his miracles are very different than the miracles that he did while he was alive. In his resurrection, Jesus walks through walls. He walks through locked doors. He appears in two places at the same time. And he becomes invisible in front of disciples. Like that. So those same powers are now in the mantle. But the Gospel of John says, the people who believe in me, my disciples, they will do even greater miracles than me. So they do more. They can heal. They can fly. They can lift heavy objects. They can be in two places at the same time. They can be invisible. So the, that opens the door for some really great stories of the mantle in the book. These alternating chapters that I told you about, it's because there were six people who wore the mantle before the Crusades. Those six people included St. John, who lived to almost 100 years old. And he was the only person who was an original apostle who died of natural causes. All the other apostles, except for Judas, who apparently committed suicide, all the others were martyred. But John was not. John took Jesus' mother, Mary, and went to Turkey, the country, a city named Ephesus. And he lived with Mary and his own family. He was just 17 years old. And he took care of her because Jesus asked John to do that at the cross. So after the Crusades, this document, this mantle, excuse me, is now passed down with a document that was written by St. Raymond Nonatus. It became like a journal of what took place with the mantle before the Crusades. Raymond jotted all this information down, hid it with the mantle, and it was found later by a woman named Marjorie of Hedzor, who was an Anglican nun. And Marjorie was excommunicated from the Anglican church because she literally robbed from the rich and gave it to the poor. And she took money from a prince's coffers and gave it to the poor, and she was thrown out of the church. She left the church. She found the mantle and the book in a uh, locked uh, chest inside the abbey church. She took it with her, and she ended up meeting the uncle of Marco Polo. The uncle of Marco Polo actually did live in London, England. And his name in England, he didn't call himself Polo, he called himself Milioni. And Milioni is an Italian word for millionaire because he was a very wealthy man. So Marjorie goes to work for Signor Milioni and they end up traveling to Italy and he introduces her to his nephew, Marco. They fall in love, they get married and Marjorie shares with him the mantle and Marco Polo takes it on his adventures. I made that last part up. During the 14th century, there's a character in the book named John Ward. And John Ward is given the mansion of Signor Milioni when Signor decides to go back to Italy and live. So he gives his house to this man named John Ward. And John Ward, according to legend and tradition, is one of the first founders of the Freemason movement. So the mantle becomes part of the tradition of the Freemasons. John Ward was a carpenter. And he built a box that looked like the Ark of the Covenant, but he put the cross of St. George on the top. He painted it red with gold 
and a dark brown to make it look like um, aspects of the Ark of the Covenant. And the mantle goes inside of the box. The box keeps getting carried down in tradition now. And at one point in time, this box ends up in a bishop who is part of the Freemason movement. And he is traveling in New England from London. And he's visiting churches and Freemason chapters. And he comes across a gentleman named Harrison Hopkins. And he gives Harrison Hopkins the box. And Harrison then becomes the wearer of the mantle number 10. Harrison Hopkins is the grandfather of our hero in the chapters after the Crusades, and his name is John Mark Hopkins. John Mark's father writes this letter. If you're reading this letter, I have unfortunately passed on. This box is a gift to you from your grandfather, Harrison. He gave the box to me before he died with instructions to leave it with you only after his death. Your granddad asked me to write this letter, to place it in the box, and to let you know the piece of cloth folded neatly below is called the mantle. And that's how John Mark Hopkins became the bearer and the wearer of the mantle. Now, the mantle is sacred, and the mantle creates miracles, and the mantle does have a secret history, but God isn't going to just allow anybody to take this mantle and create havoc you need to do good. So John Mark, with the mantle, dedicates his life to healing people who are addicted to drugs, who are homeless, and who are now struggling with mental illness. Wouldn't that make sense, right? That in these modern times, that's something that Jesus would probably want a healer to do, is to go after people who are addicted and people who become homeless. And so, my friends, I wrote this book as a ministry. I want it to touch people because there's some really moving pieces in here. And you'll also get to hear Jesus talk to John Mark Hopkins all over the place. And I really pray that this book will help bring you, if you read it, closer to the living God. Because I truly believe that God keeps us safe from hidden dangers all day long that we have no idea that could happen to us. And if you're interested in the book, as I shared, it's on my website, it's on Amazon, it's on Barnes & Noble. And that really is my presentation. And I want to thank you for allowing me to be here tonight in the absolutely beautiful, cozy, and lovely um, Berwick Public Library. So thank you very much. That's my presentation. Have a good night. Ta-da! Something was on a timer in my presentation. <laughs>